With its PS Vita-like design and hidden slide-out keyboard, the GPD Win 4 feels more like a true pocket PC than any handheld we've tested so far, and is on the more affordable side at $799. Though that's more expensive than the newer and more powerful Asus ROG Ally, and it has a handful of drawbacks that force you to weigh what really matters most in your personal gaming experience. If the GPD Win 4 looks familiar, well, it should. The design is strikingly similar to 2012's PlayStation Vita. Everything from the shape to the look of the buttons feels like a callback, though Vita owners will notice that it's a bit bigger in every dimension. GPD has also gone with offset joysticks instead of the classic Sony side-by-side. -side. But, of course, the Win 4 isn't a PlayStation Vita is anything. It's a full-fledged gaming PC and has the performance chops to prove it. Inside its small yet chunky boy shell, it features a Ryzen 7 6800U processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, and up to one terabyte of NVMe storage. It's a powerful, proven combination for running modern games at medium to high settings. It also comes with a full bloat-free Windows 11 installation, excluding the configuration app. Since it's essentially a laptop in handheld form, there's a lot more that it needs to accomplish with that control set. Its six inch screen slides upward to reveal a full keyboard. The keys are completely flat and we're not convinced it's actually better than the touch keyboard that comes baked into Windows 11, but it's a nice alternative if you'd rather have a tactile physical experience for typing. Using a switch on the left side of the console, you can swap between mouse mode and controller mode. In mouse mode, the right joystick controls the cursor and the face buttons act like arrows, while the D-pad turns into a navigation cluster for quickly paging up and down. The bumpers become left and right click. Surprisingly, there's even a tiny clickable trackpad just below the right joystick that works great for quickly positioning your cursor, less so for fine movements and clicking icons. Touch control is another option and is usually the more natural choice unless you need that extra precision. While it looks like a cross between a PS Vita and a Nintendo Switch, it feels much more like an actual PC thanks to these additions. The layout in broad strokes is similar to an Xbox controller. The face buttons are on the smaller side, but are tactile and easy to press accurately. The D-pad is the same, and though we prefer split directionals, it's accurate and works well even with demanding fighting games. The bumpers are clicky like mouse buttons, and analog triggers have enough throw to feel good and work well in racing games and shooters. Start, select, and menu are positioned along the face, as well as a fingerprint reader below the D-pad, so you can use Windows Hello for logging in. Hello, Windows. Windows? Oh, hello! There are also two programmable buttons on the rear of each grip for games and Windows shortcuts. Love those Windows shortcuts. The Win 4 has a relatively generous assortment of inputs and outputs. A pair of USB Type-C ports are placed on the top and bottom. Both can be used for charging, but the top port uses the new USB 4 standard for eGPU support. Nice. There's also a full-size USB Type-A port on the top for connecting a hub or peripherals, a power button, volume rocker, and headphone jack. On the left, there's also a high-speed micro SD slot that supports cards up to 160 megabits per second. The screen you'll be playing on is nice and bright at 400 nits, about the same as a typical gaming laptop. It offers crisp visuals with a 1920 by 1080 native resolution, though you're gonna wanna set games to 720p for the best performance. Configuring the GPD Win 4 is done using GPD's Motion Assist software. It's very much a love it or hate it application. It's lightweight, but bare bones and not explained at all. Coming from the IS Space app and the rich UI of the Steam Deck, this app is functional but feels woefully outdated. You'll need to learn it regardless because it's where you dial in performance, motion controls, and assign hotkeys for your most used commands. There are seven TDP settings ranging from 5 watts to 28 watts, and they can be one-click activated. Increasing the power improves performance, but decreases battery life. Imagine that.
The Win 4 features a 45.6 watt hour battery, which is more than both the Steam Deck and the Ioneo Air, but a hair behind the Air Plus. In our testing at a median 15 watt TDP, the system will typically last about two hours when playing modern games at medium settings. Raising that to the full 28 watt TDP and the battery life drops to closer to a single hour. So you're gonna wanna keep the charging brick on hand. Either way, don't count on more than a couple hours without the charger, unless you're playing easy to run retro games or indies. The GPD Win 4 is running the same chip as other proven handheld gaming PCs, so it should come as no surprise that it has gaming chops. To compare handhelds to one another, we put them through the same roster of tests as a traditional gaming laptop. All games are set to ultra settings and FSR is turned on balance mode where available. We also set the TDP to its highest setting, which in this case is 28 watts. The GPD Win 4 delivers impressive results for its small size across the board. These are visually impressive games all set to their highest settings and only two of them failed to hit 30 FPS, all without having a dedicated GPU, which is kind of awesome. It's possible to pull some great performance from this little machine. The question is, whether it's worth choosing the GPD-4 when there are so many good options to choose from. At $799, it has value on its side, but only if you remove the Steam Deck from the running. There is no beating the deck in price, but the GPD Win 4 beats it in performance and portability. Compared against the iNeo 2, Geek, and Air Plus, things get more complicated. All four machines use the same Ryzen 7 6800U, run on Windows 11, and offer similar performance. The Win 4, however, is the smallest of the group and the only one to feature a built-in mouse and keyboard. They make it feel much more like a tiny laptop than a handheld that also happens to be a PC. It's a fine but meaningful difference in how the Win 4 feels to use. Its performance is very good, and its small Vita-like form factor makes it easy to carry with you on the go. Given how close it is to the competition, however, whether or not it's the best choice for you really depends on how much you value the unique qualities it brings to the table. For even more handheld PC gaming, check out our review of the Aya Neo 2. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.